I invite you to read about Kanot's accolades in your booklet. Why Takshabloom Hilbert is renowned for revitalizing the Lashutsi language. And she wrote a prayer of blessing for gatherings between native peoples and new peoples. It emphasizes we are better together. And the first time I heard my friend, Squall Ha Halitza, Upper Skagit Elder, K Nant, speak by his prayer in public. It was at my installation as the pastor at Burlington Lutheran Church, which sits squarely on Upper Skagit land. And Kay and I were connected through a mutual friend of ours, Terry Kylo, who is also here tonight. And without my knowledge, Terry had shown Kay my church's land acknowledgement to ask her what she thought about it. <laughs> and Terry then brought Kay's feedback back to me. It's kind of the feedback you always want, but when you get it, you're like, ooh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I incorporated her suggestions and was then invited to lunch for a first meeting, just her and me. And she asked me questions that got deeper and deeper into my life experience. What was it like to be a female pastor? What was it like to be an LGBTQ female pastor? And she wanted to know more about me than what was at the surface. She wanted to know my wounds. She wanted to know my stigma. She wanted to know my source of pride. She wanted to see me. And by the end of our conversation, we had become baby friends. Mm -hmm. And she agreed to offer a blessing at my installation. We are better together. And since then, I have heard Kay speak this prayer so, so many times. And every time, it comes from the very core of her being. And the bridge building work that she does is costly for her. And yet she continues to do it because so much is at stake. If our liberation is truly bound up with each other, everyone, dominant and non-dominant cultures, then our collective well-being depends on our ability to know one another, to see one another, to acknowledge harms, and to move forward together in better ways. But the truth-telling that is required to get any semblance of collective well-being depends on our ability to know one another, to see one another, to acknowledge harms, and to move forward together in better ways. It costs K and any Native person to speak of their history, of the history of genocide. And for those of us who are not indigenous to North America, anytime we have the opportunity to hear a Native person tell their truth, our very souls have a responsibility to listen. It's not always easy to listen, to witness. And yet we need to understand in order to walk better paths. Kay provides the gift of truth-telling that is not meant to induce guilt, but enable us to see in others their wounds, their stigma, and their pride, to truly make us better together. Kay is my colleague, she's my advocate, and she's my friend, as I hope I am for her. So I congratulate her on this award for being recognized for what she's been doing already for decades, for
for being a world changer. So please welcome CCI Squall Hawitsa. I come from the Washington Martin Moses Jones family, and I am Upper Skagit, Yakima, Wenatchee, Snoqualmie, and Swinomish. All of those ancestors are part of who I am. I would like to thank the Skagit Women Alliance Network for lifting up women in all across Skagit Valley and throughout the various stages of their life. Thank you for the Swinomish Canoe family for their beautiful song. Thank you, Janie, for inviting them. It's healing, isn't it? Yeah. Our Skagit family lived in many villages, from Mount Vernon to the Cascades. Our tribal history is rich with traditions, songs, language, and spirituality. We had cedar for our longhouses, canoes, and baskets. We had an abundance of food and plants for medicine. Each and every person was valued and had a gift to contribute to the community. Whether a storyteller, a healer, a hunter, a weaver, or a carver, all were valued equally. In a symbiotic relationship between community and the land that we were stewarding. When the newcomers arrived, life changed dramatically. All of our traditions, ceremonies, resources, and culture were threatened. For my family, three generations of boarding school followed. My grandmother and great grandmother did not speak English when they started to lay a boarding school. My mother did not speak Lashootsi when she started boarding school in Salem, Oregon at Chamawa. When she arrived at school, the first thing they did was cut off her long hair. Each child received a schedule and it told them what they would do from morning to night. The new children were helped by the older children. My mom had two younger sisters at the school with her, and she watched after them so they wouldn't miss home so much. In the morning, they made their bed and did chores. Meals always seemed like there wasn't enough food. For half the days, they were in academics, and the other half, they, the boys took trade school, and the girls were taught to be domestics. All of our culture was put aside. They were forced to learn dominant culture. Once a year, they were able to put on a brief play, which represented being native. They were being told each and every day that who they were was less than. And everything they were being taught made them better. After three generations, the elders knew it was safer not to teach much of what they knew. It was safer to enculturate, give up the language, religion, and many teachings. Cultural genocide was an ongoing, effective effort. When I was young, my mom really didn't talk much about boarding school, but later in life she began to speak out. As a young adult working for the tribe, 
I would always ask my elders, did you go to boarding school? When I asked one elder, she told me proudly, no. She was the youngest of 14 children. And when the government man came to get her, her words, her older sibling stood in front of her and said, not this one. While her father, a minister and a respected member of the Upper River community, was negotiating and begging with the government man, can I just raise this one? This wasn't a long time ago. This elder is still alive today. My mom went back to college in her 40s and received a degree in political science. She used that degree to work within the very system that had taken so much from her people. She not only used her voice for indigenous issues, but for so many other causes, such as farm worker rights, LGBTQ, and the environment. My life was profoundly affected by generations of trauma. My mom did her best to raise us, but it was hard for her to raise us in a home when she was raised in an institution. It was hard for any of us to teach what we do not know. She tried her best to give us Christmas and Easter and Halloween. These could never fill the void created by the loss of our ways and traditions. These three generations of lost culture resulted in generations of alcohol and drug abuse, family violence, and higher suicide rates. Yet today, I try to follow in the footsteps of my ancestors and stand up with strength and resilience. My community does this by reclaiming their language, their stories, their songs, weaving, and many other beautiful parts of our culture. I share our family story so that we may know each other in a deeper way and build stronger relationships. Even after all the trauma, I still believe that we are stronger together. We are better together. Thank you, by Talk to Blue Hilbert for your words of wisdom. And if I may, I'd like to share those words of wisdom with you. That we are stronger together. We are stronger together. We help each other in this way. And we need to reach out and meet each other in the communities and share our stories and be stronger together. I thank my family and my friends and my friends who are family for being here and supporting me tonight. And so many wonderful people in this community who are swamped with the amazing support they give women and for my beautiful Swinomish family.